This is going to be another NASCAR themed vlog, well imagine that. But what I want to talk about is the NASCAR Hall of Fame just opened a few years ago and I have no problem with anybody that's in it. What I have a problem with is NASCAR's been around for over 60 years. They are putting five people a year in. Some people that are alive now, and I'll give you the perfect example, may not be alive by the time they get in if they get in. Five people a year is not enough. The perfect example is Cotton Owens driver, car builder, engine builder. Is actually scheduled to go into the next class but unfortunately he passed away before he had a chance to go in. I think the very first class should have included maybe a hundred people. Now the first class I remember telling someone when they announced five I said the first class you're going to have Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, two people named Bill France, and then there's one wild card, which turned out to be Junior Johnson. Well deserved. Credit with bringing R.J. Reynolds into the sport. Have no problem with any of them. Have no problem with some of the ones that's been in since. Bobby Allison, Cale Yarbrough, Lee Petty. All of them deserve to be in. And really deserve, Darrell Walter really deserved to be in the first class. They probably needed a hundred people, probably twenty drivers. This is in the very first class, maybe ten from the pre modern era before nineteen seventy two and ten from seventy two up. Um, needed crew chiefs, car owners, and you could even have a category for racing teams such as instead of Glenn and Leonard Wood being pieced in and the Petties being pieced in, put Petty Enterprises in. You know, you got Richard and Lee Petty plus their cousin Dale Inman in. No problem there. They're pushing for Morris Petty, but whether he gets in is going to be a good question. He deserves it. You you could have a class for promoters of the racetracks, guys like Bruton Smith, the late Clay Earls from Martinsville turned that track into a show place. And here's the one I want to talk about that absolutely should be in the Hall of Fame, and that's Ken Squire. He does have an award within the Hall of Fame name for him, but that's not enough. He should be inducted. I will get to why in a moment. But there's a lot of media members that's done a lot for NASCAR over the years. I can think, just name a few off the top of my head. Bob Myers wrote for Stock Car Racing Magazine. Gentleman named, I think it's David Poole, passed away here a few years ago. And there's more. And then you talk about, on the TV broadcast, Dick Berger, just retired from Fox. Former editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, also has or is involved with the magazine Speedway Illustrated. The late Chris Economaki with Speed Sport News and doing the races, early races on the terrible ABC Wild World of Sports coverage. It was a week or two later between barrel rolling and log jumping and arm wrestling and ping pong. Just little tidbits of races, but that's all we had back in when I was a kid in the 60s and 70s. But now I want to get back to why Ken Squire should be in. Ken Squire was in on the founding of the Motor Racing Network, which was responsible to bringing radio broadcasts to, and this network still exists to this day. Ken's no longer involved with it because in the late 70s he switched to TV. Still broadcast races to this day at the non Bruton Smith tracks. Bruton Smith has his own network, and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway also has their own network. But Motor Racing Network does the rest. They also do all the truck races regardless of which track. Now, Ken Squire. This is the biggest reason he deserves to be in. Ken Squire worked to get the Daytona 500 flag to flag on CBS. He went to CBS. He sold CBS on the idea. Also, while doing a bodybuilding competition in Australia, I believe, he saw some kind of camera that he thought, hey, that might work as an in-car camera. And in 79, CBS debuted the first of the good in-car cameras. In fact, 
think it was about 83 before Kelly Yarbrough won the Daytona 500 carrying a camera. But you got to think about something with Ken Squire. I know this is running a little longer than I want it to, but you got to think about something with Ken Squire. If it had not been for Ken Squire convincing CBS to put the Daytona 500 live flag to flag in, in the late 70s, the first one was 79, I'm sure these negotiations or the talking to him started in 78 or maybe even 77, would we be watching every Sprint Cup race, every nationwide race, every Camping World Truck Series race, live flag to flag. Now cable played a big part in that. I'm not arguing that. Would we have the practice and qualifying shows we get? I am old enough to remember before we had good coverage of racing. Trust me, I remember having Darrell Waltrip's first win at Nashville in 75 before the days of the internet and so forth and when racing was not rec NASCAR racing was not recognized as a major sport I had to wait till my racing publications came to even know who won the race it was it was that bad back in the even the mid 70s and even in the late 70s early 80s when the races weren't on TV and I'm in the Louisville area we didn't have a radio station that carried them I had to drive 40 miles down almost to Brandenburg, Kentucky, just on the Indiana side, Mockport, Indiana, to pick up the Owensboro station. Ken Squire has done so much for racing on the media side. He should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think maybe Barney Hall from Motor Racing Network should be the one to induct him. Barney Hall, there's another one. Maybe he ought to be in. But that's just a side thought. This is my thoughts on the NASCAR Hall of Fame and why Ken Squire should be in, not just with an award name for him.